Today we will start a new course, Big Data and Biology. Before we begin and dive into what is Big Data and Biology and what are the big data sets that are available in biology, I'll give you a very brief overview of where the big data is coming from and why biology is very exciting area for big data analytics and how can we utilize that to solve the current healthcare problems that exist for the world. Researchers have been discussing a lot about computation biology in recent years. Some of the researchers like Mark Markowitz have mentioned that actually if one looks at it, all biology is computation biology. What has happened in recent years that a lot of computational biology and techniques are becoming very central to the study of biology and understanding how life exists on earth. And the reason computational biology is becoming more and more important in understanding biology is because it brings up a certain rigor and testability to biology where we can test different hypotheses using computational tools to understand what is happening at a systems or a global scale in biology and how it defines life. Uh, what we have also seen is that modern biology actually requires a lot of data these days to get a more comprehensive view of what is happening in biology. So various experimental techniques that are being developed, various computational techniques that are being developed actually bring in a much richer inf uh, information source that allows us to understand biology better. Some of the other concerns that have come up is that whether big data is that is coming in biology from the genomics which is this is the biology component or astronomical which is the another generator of big data are these two comparable and if you one if one looks at it actually astronomical data say coming from hubble telescope or james watts, watts telescope these days is huge because these are image data data sets however genomic data even though it is not as big as astronomical data at the moment it's if you look at the trajectory of the data as it's increasing over years it actually will be quite huge the Another point that I want to mention here is that while astronomical data is image and you just look at various images and compare images and study those images, genomic data or the data coming from biological systems is not just big, it's more complex, more uh, difficult to understand and the insights that we have to get from these kind of data sets require lot more computational approaches than what are required for let's say astronomical data or even social like Twitter data or Facebook data. So genomic data is actually becoming one of the holy grails of computer science to understand life and diseases uh, that exist in human populations. So the diversity of information that is there in genomic data or biological data is very unique and requires a completely new set of algorithms, a completely new set of uh, computational tools to understand biology. So what we will do today is to sort of see where this big data is coming from and what are the insights that one can start getting from understanding this big data in biology. So just to give you a way the info like sort of the information of where is this big data coming from. So if you look at the biological systems, they are multifaceted, they are multidimensional, therefore the tools and techniques that are required to understand biological systems are multifaceted and multidimensional. So some of the dimensions are mentioned here in this figure. So this is the first dimension which is called the genomics dimension which is the information available from the DNA. We will come back to these layers of information later in the later in the course as well. Then how that information is regulated or read, what is the output of reading that information, how is that information then translated into function and what are the inputs 
from the metabolic network which is the which are the uh, sources of energy the chemicals that drive various systems in the in a living organisms the chemical uh, the, the the energy systems that exist in different cells how do they regulate and then finally how does it actually translate into a trait or a phenotype and all of these facets or multi-dimensional layers are of different extent if you look at a cellular level, organ level or at an organism level as well as if you look at how this in these layers interact with the as the organism ages or as the environment changes. So, what you see is essentially a integration of a multi-dimensional data set to understand the biology that drives an organism for a particular trait or a phenotype and this is essentially what is the whole idea of understanding big data and biology. We will not cover all these details in this particular course but what we will try to do is to give you some snippets of computational tools and algorithms that exist to understand and study some of these layers of information. So, what can be done? So, if we were able to understand each and every of these layers, what we can actually do with this data? And this is something that has been very exciting recently because as the data has increased, as the information has increased, we have been able to actually understand a lot more than what we were able to do, let's say, 20 years ago. So, where is all this information coming from? We know a lot about the chemical compounds. These could be metabolites which are the chemicals that drive various energy systems in the cell. These can be drugs as well or drugs, right? Genes are the genetic factors that make up an organism. So, how are they getting affected? Not only from the chemical metabolites and the drugs, but also because of the changes in their sequence, which we will come back to in a bit how that then changes the functions, which changes the function of a cell. So, this is change in the function of a gene, this is change because of the change in function of a gene, how the cell changes and therefore, how in one sense disease get manifested or even normal growth gets, gets uh, changed right how how does a normal growth happen like what happens normally unless and until we understand what happens happens normally we would not be even even be able to understand what happens in a disease state so both of these are important so based on these pieces of information what we can actually start building is a descriptive network of data right different layers give different pieces of information we can start integrating this these layers of information to un get what is called a large biological data. Those data sets can help build various sources and pathways of interactions which will be a network that is at either a cellular level or at an organismal level and based on the changes that happen during a normal versus a disease state one can start building algorithms which could be both machine learning algorithms or simple computational algorithms to predict what would be happening when certain diseases happen. So, for example, when we have a normal state and a disease state. So, between that if we were to build this networks and here is a network which is perturbed in disease. Comparison of these two will tell us what specific sets of genes are differentially affected. Right? Once you know that, you know what to target. Once you know that, you know which proteins or which uh, phenotypes, specific phenotypes are getting affected. And that is a very important piece of information because that is the description, molecular description of a disease and therefore, in order to treat those diseases, one should be targeting those molecular functions. 
and this is how most of the modern drugs are being developed as well. So this is what the whole scope of big data in biology is. There's another piece of information. So what we talked about was the molecular data, right? The cellular data, the organismal data, but lot of information is also coming from healthcare systems. So if you look at patient records, uh, patient uh, imaging data, uh, medical devices, there are various wearable smartphones as well these days and lot of data that already exists as literature, all of that is actually contributing to large amounts of data. It is predicted that in, in 20, uh, 2013, about 153 exabytes of data was available in the health for the healthcare domain. And this, this includes all of these uh, variety of uh, data sets. And it's hoped that soon, we will be crossing more than 3000 exabytes and that's a huge amount of data and to analyze this data and to be able to understand what is happening for a particular disease in a particular population will be a great insight in treating that disease for that particular population and this is something that we will deal with in later courses not in this particular course as of now and where where does this sort of help right as, as I mentioned, it can be used to devise tools to predict the disease. So therefore, preventive care can be taken. This is a very interesting uh, aspect of uh, using big data in healthcare is to develop tools for personalized medicine. That means for each individual or each individual population specific medical uh, interventions can be uh, made available so that the efficacy of a particular intervention is higher rather than a general uh, medicine that is usually that is the case right now in most of medicine. It can help in studying how a particular drug is having an effect in a particular population. One of the things that we are very much into is like wearing variables and various devices like Apple watches or other watches and this sort of allows us to actually predict events happening prior to uh, that event happening. Finally, it also helps in reducing health care costs because if preventive care can be taken, they won't the incidence or the frequency of disease would be lower. So therefore, health care costs will uh, be lowered and it would enable patients to actually take control of their health and this is something that we saw uh, a lot during covid pandemic where a lot of these tools were actually being used to prevent uh, uh, prevent spread of covid so this is this sort of also will come under identification and tracking which was one of the primary ways of controlling covid infection so as you see a lot of opportunities exist in healthcare domain as well finally uh, what i want to understand and what i want to discuss today is that while we are all very excited about healthcare and healthcare data sets molecular biology data sets that i described before like the genomics, epigenomics, transcriptomics, why do we need to understand molecular biology? Because the reason we are introducing this course with a short overview of molecular biology is to bring everybody who is taking this course on the same page so that when we talk about various terms and techniques that generate big data in biology, you are aware of the fact that why this technique and what what these terms mean right so studying molecular biology is an important aspect of understanding big data in biology or is an important aspect of understanding how healthcare data is to be utilized so if you look at this figure here you have information coming from DNA, which is your genetic material. We'll discuss that. DNA methylation, which is how the information is regulated or read. 
this is sort of is a switchboard of on and off switches of various elements in the DNA. This is again same thing regulation. Once that has happened, what happens to the output of DNA, which is the RNA? And once that has happened, what happens to the output of RNA, which is protein, which does all the function? Now, once you have that information, you can start creating molecular maps, which are the visualization tools. Some of the other tools are cell type characterizations, marker identifications, and this would lead to how do we differentiate populations between healthy and normal or even within disease uh, lower risk higher risk and then hopefully also have uh, some some information to uh, discover new drug targets or tar drug targets for uh, not un like understudied or new diseases so the to study molecular biology will help us analyze the big data because it would help us understand what is the purpose and the potential of big data. It would also help us understand what are the differences when we talk between control and test data sets. And as I mentioned, there were various uh, techniques called genomics, transcriptomics, proteomics. So, if you see all of these words end with omics. So, these are called omic data sets and we know that even though the information flow is happening from genomics to transcriptomics to proteomics, the relationship between uh, genomics to transcriptomics to proteomics is not linear so and not very correlated. So, this is the additional complexity that comes during analysis of molecular biology data or bi big data in biology and therefore, it is important for us to understand this aspect. What is happening at the regulation level uh, when the information is flowing from top to bottom and also one of the interesting and sort of uh, complicating factor is that data from same individual can vary right in a very spatially spatial temporal manner which means that if you sample the individual at let's say 5 years of age then at 15 years of age then at 30 then at 45 your output will be very different even though the genomic information remains the same and this becomes an additional challenge which we have to encounter and resolve when we are talking about big data in biology. And therefore, when we say we can average across data sets that always does not really mean much because a lot of information is in the temporal timeline rather than in the in inputs and outputs of that particular uh, particular uh, phenotype that we are interested in. So, therefore, in order to understand and make sense of data, it is important to understand molecular biology before we dive into various computational tools and techniques of analyzing big data.